Nick, thank you so much for agreeing to take part in our Great Mind series. We're absolutely delighted to have you participate. Thank you. My pleasure. Perhaps you can start off by telling our viewers a bit about Austin Reed Group, uh, maybe a bit about your history, your operations, um, and a bit about your business processes as well. That'd be great. Okay. Well, Austin Reed was started um, by a man, um, not surprisingly, called Austin Reed. Um, his, his family had been um, in the drapery business um, from about 1850 and had a shop in Reading. Um, he was a very ambitious young man. Um, he saw an opportunity in the city, and if you think at the turn of the, uh, getting into the 20th century, um, there was the up and coming middle classes and many people who started working in the city um, who previously wouldn't have worked in, in office type jobs. And he saw an opportunity to sell them smart, um, good quality but good value, um, initially shirts and, and, um, and collars, because in those days collars were um, detachable from shirts and you change your collar every day and probably your shirt not quite so often. Um, and he started a shop um, selling these in Fenchurch Street, just down the road from here, um, in 1900. Um, then opened another couple of shops in the city. Uh, then in 1910 went to Regent Street and opened on the um, number, I think it's 113 Regent Street, was the original shop, um, which was then in the 20s was knocked down and the whole of Regent Street was rebuilt. Um, but he stayed on the same site. And in fact, we were on that site up until two years ago when we moved across the road to, to, to a different site. So we've been on Regent Street for, for uh, well over 100 years. Um, and he opened shops uh, literally round the country in, in areas where um, business was, was, was growing up and there was a need for people um, who worked in offices to, to dress smartly, um, but, but always with an, a, a, an emphasis on good value, so high quality products at a reasonable price. Um, and that was how we built the, the, the Austin Reed brand. Thank you so much for that. It sounds like there's a lot of history to the brand as well. Um, the next question is around challenges. What are some of the key challenges facing the retail sector at the moment, specifically for um, Austin Reed? And how do you envisage uh, your company responding to these challenges? I think the, the, the biggest challenge that we've seen, and it's, it's not a new challenge, but it's a challenge which is, which is with us um, and, and is, is developing, um, is the challenge of the internet. Um, the fact now that, that, that customers are, it's the knowledge that customers have, that the customers can, can go on the internet and can do research for all over the world in a, in a matter of a, of a few minutes. Um, and people want now to be able to shop via the internet. Um, they expect the, the, the internet and the stores to be interchangeable, um, different channels, but with the same, the same experience. And I think the challenge has been that, as, as with most retailers up until maybe 10 years ago, um, we were essentially a bricks and mortars based retailer and we knew where our shops were and we knew where our customers lived. Um, we've now got to uh, develop our business such that we have an internet presence and the internet is quite a, a different animal. Um, people shop differently, they act differently, they behave differently. But I think the biggest single change is information. The information that customers have um, is almost infinite on the internet and therefore they are much more um, um, uh, they have much more information at their, their, their fingertips to make buying decisions and to compare you with other people. So I think the growth is, 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 is for us, comes in the internet. But it, some of it comes at the expense of stores, but you can't afford not to have both because if you're merely stores-based, you miss a big opportunity and your customers expect you to be. Uh, what role does innovation play within your organisation and how is this, say, promoted among your staff? I think retail is, is, is a, it, somebody once said, much cleverer than me, once said that retail is a very, very simple business, that retailers make very complicated. You know, at the end of the day, all we're trying to do is we're trying to buy a product that we can sell to somebody um, for a little bit more money than, than we paid for it. Um, and if you do that, you're a successful retailer. Um, we make it very, very complicated. But I think innovation, um, it, has a part to play in, in retail and I think that the, the growth of the internet has definitely made bricks and mortars retailers look at their operations and think how can we do things differently. Technology has totally transformed the way shoppers interact within stores. How does Austin Reed embrace such modern technologies and perhaps can you give us an example? Yeah. Um, I think that we're, we're, I mean, we're literally, uh, as, it, as it happens, and it's not, not staged, but we're literally 
um, probably about 20 minutes um, from launching um, our website on a new platform, which we've spent the last 18, month, last 18 months developing. So we are very much looking at how we can, we can not just have an internet site, because actually to have an internet site that doesn't do very much and isn't very um, user friendly is, is relatively easy. To have an internet site that actually allows people to be fully engaged, um, to specifically target people, to target people in different parts of the world, to target men versus women, um, customers who want suits versus customers who want um, shorts for their holidays, people who are bargain hunters versus people who want something different. It, it's, it's very much developing that, um, that internet um, side of the business. Um, and you know we now have a, an operation, for example, where when you order on the internet from us, we don't o just source your product from from the uh, warehouse. We can also product source product from the stores. So we've had to set up internet links so that the stores know they've got to collect it. They've then got to fill in and tell the system that they've actually found it. And they're sending it back, sending it to the customer. So it, it, it's becoming more integrated. In a lot of our masters programs, we teach leadership. Now, what kind of leader are you and what do you look for in potential leaders? Well, I, I suppose the, the, the word that most successful leaders, I think the word that probably most describe most successful leaders, and I think most leaders would hope would apply to them, I'm not sure it does apply to me, but I suppose the word inspirational. Um, if I think back, whether it was uh, a teacher at school or the, the sort of people I've, I've worked for, and I've worked for, you know, Stuart Rose, uh, Philip Green, some, some very big and very different characters. And I suppose what you're looking for from, from, from a leader um, is inspiration. And, and that's probably the, the, the biggest thing, I think, that, that you need. You want to be inspired. You want to feel that, A, they know what they're doing. They're leading this. They're, they're carrying the flag. Um, but also, um, they're taking you with them. So I think that, that, that it's, it's, it's less about technical knowledge. Um, it's more about actually dealing with people and being good with people, but also being seen to be somebody who is prepared to put their hand up and say, actually, yes, We've got a difficult decision, let's make the decision right, we've made the decision, now let's make it happen. Nick, you've had a very successful career in the world of retail. What is it about this sector that still excites you? I, I once described it to, to somebody when they, they, they said, um, what is it about retail? I said, it's like a virus. Once it gets in your blood, you, you, you can never get rid of it. And, and I was at the university doing chemistry, as I said. Um, which I didn't enjoy at all. I, I wanted to change and didn't for all sorts of reasons and stuck it out and got my degree in chemistry. And when I left university, I wanted to do something completely different. And at that stage, there was, there was something, I don't think it exists now, called the milk round, where it, companies it went around. Does it? Oh, yeah. right. Probably slightly different than it was then. Companies came around. You met a company and whatever. And at the time, um, I, I saw a whole wide range of people with management training courses and all this sort of stuff. Um, and all the retailers were interested in me, in me. And at the time I thought, oh, it's because they, obviously, they can obviously see something in me and this is a big clue and I should, uh, I should be interested in retail. And I was interested in retail, um, but this pushed me towards it. Um, I discovered later, once I, I joined retail, that, uh, that in those days retail wasn't particularly well paid. Mm -hmm. It wasn't particularly well thought of. Um, and the retailers were just grateful for anybody who sort of gave them the time of day. So I, I, I rather fell into retail. <laughs> Um, but I did love it. it. It is a, it's a great, great industry and a great place to work because of a whole range of reasons. But number one, you can make things happen. You can try things out. You can do things, and you find out very quickly whether they work. It's not like designing a car and then taking five years to develop it and build it, and then when it comes out, it's not very good. You can do things in retail. You can change things, you know, in in a minute, five minutes, ten minutes, a couple of hours time. I think the other thing is that, that it, it's, it's, it's very interesting because it is changing all the time. You're dealing with people. And also, the, the, I suppose that the thing that I, I like most about it is it's not, it's not technically that, that complicated. A lot of it is about common sense and logic. And if you think logically, what is it that people are going to want? Where are they going to want it? Are they going to shop in this place? Are they going to shop somewhere else? It's actually quite a, um, 
it, it's quite an organised sort of sort of business. And if you have common sense, and it's one of the things that, that we look for in, in, in people that, that, that we take into the business more than anything else. As, as somebody famously said, you know, the problem with common sense is anything but common. Um, that brings me on to my last question. If you have any advice to students who are thinking about a career in the retail sector, what would this be? Well, I think, first of all, I think you've got, you've got to have a, a bit of interest in it. Um, you know, to try and, and, and do something for the rest of your life that you're not particularly interested in is, is whatever that career is, whether it's retail or whatever, is, is not going to be a smart place to start. I think the second thing that, that, that sometimes surprises me when I'm, I'm interviewing, not so much nowadays, but I used to interview people who are starting in the industry, is, you know, you talk to people and say, oh, yes, I really want to work for Austin Reed or, or whatever company it was, um, and they'd never been to a store. And you think to yourself, well, how can you possibly know you want to work for, un unless you've been and done that? So I, I suppose my, my, um, my advice would be, there's a, there's a huge amount of information, not just on the internet, there's a huge amount of information out there. If you want to join a company in, in any industry, go and look at their operations, look at it from a customer's point of view, do some research. See if you can use your connections to try and get some work experience. Most companies would be only too pleased to have somebody to come along and, and, and work for a couple of weeks and, and find out. And I think by doing that, what you, you do two things. A, it helps you learn about the, the, the industry and, and the potential um, of whether that's going to be the right career for you. Um, but secondly, and perhaps more importantly, it then demonstrates to a, to a, um, to a prospective employer mm -hmm. that actually you've got some get up and go. You, will, you went and found out. You don't come to the world just asking a load of questions. You put something into the process. And I think that in, in these days where many, many people have degrees, many, many people have very good qualifications, um, to make yourself stand out from the crowd, um, you know, you need to think a bit more. You need to sell yourself. Um, and the best way to do that is to go and do something that, 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 that demonstrates to the prospective employer that actually you're the sort of person they really do want to employ. Thank you so much for your insights, Nick. On behalf of everyone at the London School of Business and Finance and Global University Systems, thank you so much for your time. Not at all. Thanks very much.